Okay, so last time we were here, we started to look at Visual Studio. We saw the software that you needed to download and set up at home if you're on Windows. There was the handout uploaded to Blackboard, and I'll put it in the network folder in a little bit. Uh, on Blackboard, I did upload a handout on how to set yourself up on the Mac. If you're trying to do it on the Mac, again, like I said last time, it's kind of more steps. It's kind of more annoying on the Mac. but. Uh, you can work here on our Windows computers, you can work with our tablets, and whatever you're doing here on Windows will work on the Mac. It's just that it's a few more steps. So I'm going to assume then today we're going to use Android tablets for development. If you brought your own device, Android, we can use it. Hopefully you also brought the cable. You need the cable and an Android device. You'll also be able to check out our tablets, first come, first serve. They're already taken today, but next time you can, you can grab one. Uh, I'm going to talk first. Uh, well, let me get a show of hands. How many of you brought your own Android device today that you want to use? A few people. Okay, good. So let me talk a little bit about how to set up your own device for development. Then I'll talk about the, our tablets. Then we'll talk more about Visual Studio. So let's see how this works. I'm going to try this. Um, I'm going to try to do it this way. Um, that kind of works. So what I want to show here is that um, um, showing it like this. So I've got an Android device, and I wanted to, I want to set it up so that I can start to use it for this class. I have right there a little icon of the comic book database, the CBDB, that little book. We're going to learn how to do that. But in order for us to get our app installed onto a real device, you need to set up your device for it to understand the development, for it to understand and communicate between Visual Studio and your device. So if you've got your own device, what you want to do first of all is go to the settings of your device. On mine, I can swipe down from the top, and then I will get settings. I get that little icon right here. So somewhere, somehow, you need to go to your settings. You don't have to do this on our tablets. If you borrowed my tablet, it's already set up. Just hold on a moment. But if you're using your own tablet or your own Android device, you need to go to the settings. Once you go to settings, In my case, at the very bottom, I have an item, Developer Options. Um, the default of devices is that they are in consumer mode, and I want to activate developer mode. This doesn't jailbreak your device. This doesn't void your warranty. Nothing like that. So on my device, I have a developer options there right above about phone. How many of you see an option that says developer options on yours? If you don't, we just need to activate it. They have it turned off because they don't want the regular people to do this advanced stuff that we're going to do. So on your device, the way you activate developer options is you first go to the About screen. So if you open About the phone or About the tablet, the trick to do this is um, there is an option in About called Build Number. I have to tap Build Number seven times to activate developer mode. I've already done it on this device, so it's going to say you've already done it. But on your device, it should work. So I found build number, and I'm going to tap seven times. But mine's already saying, no need, you're already a developer. So try that for a moment. Tap build number seven times and see if it pops up to tell you you're a developer now. Once it says you're a developer, you want to go back to the previous screen, and you should see developer options. Let me pause there. If you're trying to do what I'm trying to do, anyone having any trouble? Do you see your developer options? I'll tell you which developer options in a moment. Is anyone having trying to do this on your own device? Do 
this this won't affect the device really and we can turn it on and off and I'll show us well how to turn this off and why we would turn it on and off as necessary in a moment so on my device when I bought it it did not have that option turned on I had to turn it on the way I'm about to show you so I turned on developer options Okay, so in the developer options screen, let's see if this wants to focus. Okay, so in the developer options screen, I open there, and the first thing that it has is at the top, in my case, it says on or off. Mine is on you may need to turn yours on. So if I turn this on, I get a bunch of extra powerful settings. When I scroll, one of them will be USB debugging. Mine is already on. But if it was off, it would look like that. It would be off. And then when I press on, it's going to pop up with a big scary message. Allow USB debugging. So again, this is not jailbreaking your device or anything like that, but this is, as the pop-up is telling you, something important is happening here. USB debugging is intended for development purposes, etc., etc. Um, apps may be installed without notification. So this is very powerful for us in class so that we can put our apps onto our devices. But in theory, what could happen is you may be browsing a website on your device and you don't quite pay attention, a pop-up happens, and you click OK on it, and what happens is it, they're installing spyware, or spam, or something on your, on your phone. Because we've turned this on that says, allow me to install apps outside of the normal way. So for class, we want this. For class, I want to turn on this allow debugging, because I want to, using the USB cable, or other methods install an app. So I will turn it on OK here and before I leave when we're done at the end of the day today I'm gonna go back to the screen and turn off the developer options. I'm gonna turn that to off before I leave so that my device is safe again. When we come back on Thursday I don't need to do the seven taps anymore but I need to come back to developer options and turn them on and then turn on allow USB debugging. So on your device you want to turn on USB debugging and I would also recommend to turn on stay awake. I would recommend you turn on the stay awake option. I would turn on the stay awake option. Um, leaving that on won't put the phone to sleep so you can quickly view what it's doing and use it and it won't be draining the battery really because you're going to be plugged in. So those are the things you need to do on your device. You need to turn on developer options. You need to turn on USB debug and stay awake. Before I plug in my phone now, the second thing that I need to do, and we'll pause for a moment if yours isn't quite working, the second thing that you need to do then is you need to go online and find the driver for your device. We also need to then install the driver so that our computer can understand your device. The best way to do this is to search for, my, in my case, mine's a Motorola, so I would search for Motorola uh, OEM USB driver. The idea is OEM USB driver. I would go online and search what's the driver for my device. If you've got a Samsung, you should search Samsung OEM USB driver. 
and based on their, your results, you're going to find the best result um, and follow it. Now, you do have to be careful because there's going to be a lot of websites out there that'll say, download your driver here. Make sure you look at the address and it's not something like radfiles.biz. Make sure it's samsung.com. Make sure you're getting the driver from Samsung, not like I got your drivers right here.com. You know, get it from a real, your real website. Mine is right there. It's going to Motorola. That's the one I want in my case. So in my case, for my device, I need to find the driver for Windows or Mac and download it. And what this will do is it will install the driver on this computer so that it can communicate with your device. That means when you come back on Thursday, you have to do this again. You have to get download the driver and install it again. Better yet, when you download the driver and you find it's the right file, save that file to your USB drive so that you don't have to hunt for it again next time. You will have to install it again next time. Yes? Uh, when doing it on Mac, do we download it to our virtual? Exactly. Virtual in the virtual Windows. device, in virtual Windows, you're going to do this in your virtual Windows because you're going to run Visual Studio in virtual Windows to connect to your device. So I'm going to pause here a moment. You want to set up developer mode if it's your device. You want to find your driver. And the way to make sure that this works is I'm going to plug it in. And there may be a pop-up in the corner about detecting your device. Mine won't pop up because it's already set up. But one way to confirm that the computer understands your device is you can, uh, can right-click you can right click computer. It's going to pop up like that maybe, but you're going to right click computer and select properties. And then device manager. In my case, since I've installed the driver and turned on debug mode, my device manager says Android device detected. My Motorola device. If yours is not working, most likely it'll say something like unknown device or other device with a little exclamation point or something. It may not fully be working. You want to, sometimes they put it under portable devices, sometimes it's elsewhere. But somewhere in this device manager it should say Android device or oftentimes also ADB device, Android debug device. I don't know what it stands for, but Android device. So we'll pause here for a moment to get your device working. 